Hi everyone, welcome to the latest episode of the Nordic Football Podcast. I'm Steve Wiss and I'm joined as ever by Jonathan for Dukba. And uh, it's been a little bit of time since we last did a full free episode here on all platforms, uh, JF. But uh, and there's been plenty of football played in the last uh, two or three weeks. Hi Steve, hi everybody. Yes, welcome to the Nordic Football Podcast. We're back for another episode, obviously. If you heard us last week, we weren't on it because we had a special guest appearance from uh, Henry uh, at Football in DK, and he brought us a, as an exclusive interview from the captain of Randers in Denmark. So hope you enjoyed that. I, I've certainly enjoyed the insight uh, from a player who played against Leicester City in the in the Conference League. I really enjoyed his insights, actually. Um, how are you, Steve? I'm all right. I've been uh, I've had a lot on my plate recently, Jonathan, um, away from football in particular, but uh, hanging on in there and. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been intriguing seeing the progress in. We're going to start with Sweden because there's been a lot of football played up there. They're into. Um, I've had five rounds now in Alsvenskan, um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on with me. But uh, hanging on in there. I hope you hope you're doing well. Yeah, not too bad. Thanks, not too bad. And yeah, we've had um, you know we we've had a couple of free shows. We've obviously been pushing on with the Patreon. Just wanted to say massive shout out to the to all the new patrons. I uh, had a lot of support from you guys and we really, really appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying the uh, bonus weekend previews. We've been doing quite well on our predictions so far. We've, we're at, uh, at the time of recording. We're on a, we were on a 70, I think 78.6% win percentage from our, our weekend preview shows where we pick every week, we pick three or four games uh, and just predict the result. And uh, we've been doing quite well. Not so good this week. I think we had one win, two losses, but you know, the average is still going to be roughly 60 percent ish so we'll, we'll, we'll update that on the patreon this week but yeah if you haven't and you are interested in joining us patreon.com slash nordic football podcast and we're going to be having some uh, some uh, previews as well aren't we? we're going to do some player profiles coming up soon on on the patreon as well as as well as the weekend preview show so thanks so much for supporting us on that we will we, we'll reel off uh if actually if, tweet us at twitter at nordic football if you're interested in a shout out because if you are one of our patrons we do say that we'll offer a shout out, but obviously it's a bit of a grey area, isn't it, Steve? Because data protection, we don't want to give people's names up. But at the same time, we, we definitely want to give you all a shout out. So if you are one of our patrons and you do want a shout out, just just tweet us or DM us if you want. Uh, and we'll be happy to support you in whatever you're doing. So, um, But it's been a very, very uh, big few weeks, hasn't it? Because in Sweden, we've had three rounds and Norway, we've had two rounds to cover. So we've got a lot to catch up on this week, haven't we, Steve? Yes, we do have. And um, once again, thanks to all our patrons from me as well. I really do appreciate you all. We will start in uh, in Sweden because uh, we say five rounds now. I'm just going to go through the top five. Uh, Hammerby have uh, 15 points, Malmo 11, Mjalby and IFK Gothenburg on 10, AIK on uh, nine points. At the bottom of the table, Degaforge yet to get off the mark Sundsvall on three points and then a couple of teams on four Helsingborg and Norshipping I mean the big standout is without doubt um Hammerby 100% record um five wins out of five absolutely flying under Marty Sifuentes they're the big story Jonathan yes Steve they are the big story and, and fair play to you you called it in the in the preseason show you said you know keep an eye out for their manager uh, I tipped them to come fourth. I'm already sort of looking at that and thinking, you know, can, can I go back and, you know, redo my season preview maybe? Uh, early days, of course, you know, we'll see how it goes. Hammerby tend to be a team that, you know, historically they are, they can be quite a streaky team when they get in a good run of form. They can they can look good. So we haven't, I don't think we've learned everything about them yet. Obviously finished fifth last season. Um, and, you know, they, last season they started with two defeats in the first three games. So this is a massive turn up for the books. But if you look at their fixtures at the start of last season, they played Malmo away and ARK away in their first three matches. So uh, I think that we'll learn a lot more about them in the weeks to come. But I have to say, Steve, this is the best Hammerby I've seen so far in my, in my what five, six years covering on this podcast, I have to say. Um, there's been the Hammerby that's been very exciting, uh, the team that scores a lot of goals. I think it was the 2019 team was very, very, uh, you know, when they got on their run of form, the team they had then, they would they could batter teams. They scored 75 goals, I think, that season. I remember it very well. Um, they racked up some 6 nils, some 6 ones. I remember the likes of Tankovic, uh, Nikola Djuric at the time, um, Khalili, players like that. I have to say, Steve, that this, uh, 
I think this Hammerby team is better than that team. Um, the reason being, I think the defensive balance, they've got the, they've got the defensive balance much, much better than they had uh, in that 2019 side. Um, don't forget that 2019 side, they end up finishing third, only one point off the title. But in the end of, you know, it was, um, it went to the final day. I'm sure you'll remember it. But uh, they fell over, the, they fell short because they conceded 38 goals in the 30 game season. Uh, and of course, if you want to win titles, compare that to, uh, for example, Malmo that season conceded 16. Jurgarden, who won in the league, conceded 19. Hammerby's goal difference and, the, and that just general defensive record uh, let them down. This season so far, Steve, you know, we've had five games played, five wins for Hammerby, 13 goals scored, incredible amount of goals, and just two goals conceded. So that tells you that this defence is... the. Are they sorting the defence out, Steve? Plus 11 well, goals. I've got, I don't want to piss on Hammerby's bonfire here, Jonathan, but I look at their fixtures and only one win remotely impresses me and that was against Mialbi. The rest of the teams Yeah, face, but let, let, let's be, yeah, we can talk about that in a minute, but let's be let's be positive to start with. I mean, Helsingborg at home win 2-1, Gisun's file away 5-1 win, and Mialbi who hadn't conceded a goal 2-0 win, Degafors away 1-0 win and Sirius away 3-0 win. Now, I've seen quite a few of these games to be fair. Um you you're right, of course, we'll talk about that in a second, you know, is it too early? to talk about the next game's Malmo at home and we'll learn a lot more about them then. But let's just focus on the positive for, for the moment because this is an incredible start to the season for them. Um, and as I said, the balance of the team is looking really, really good. They've got a good system, Steve, uh, under Sifuentes. I'm sure maybe you can comment on him a little bit just based on his time in Norway in a second. But in terms of the balance of the side, I really like what, they, what they're what they doing. You know, just want to uh, give the listeners maybe who haven't seen him play a little bit of a an overview of their kind of um, their formation, obviously. So they're playing at the moment kind of a kind of a four three three. Uh, you could call it four two three one, maybe. Um, the fullbacks get forward quite well. Sandberg and Gies, uh, Dovin in goal. He's come in, my my man, who uh, he was one of my ten to watch last season. Of course, the young keeper. He's got a big future um, at the back as well. Fengen and Curtis as well, uh, and obviously they rotate. You know, they've had a couple of other players come in in those positions, of course. Um, then in midfield. I think maybe arguably the player of the season so far, Nahir Bissara, has been phenomenal. Uh, and maybe the other player of the season, arguably, is Williot Swedberg, the youngster who was in our tent to watch this year on Patreon, of course. Um, then, of course, they got up front Ludvigsen, Salmani with Swedberg and Yippie Anderson. But, Steve, I've got to say, the balance of the team, they defend in, in numbers, they play a really modern style, uh, they press from the front, you know, they they, they look like a kind of um, hungry team. They, they press, they can, they've got the energy to press from the front. They defend well as well. They, they play a good line uh, defensively. But like you say, the big thing is, of course, maybe you could argue five games that you'd say maybe they should win. Um, and they've got bigger challenges to come. But I, I, like I say, Steve, um, as of so far, this is the best Hammerby side I've seen in many, many years. Yeah, I mean, um, the, the test actually comes now. They've got Malmo at home next match. So... How do you think they'll they will approach that game? And if they were to win it, do we have to really take them seriously? Yeah, that's the thing. And I think obviously we'll do our weekend preview show. But I mean, even now we can sort of briefly mention it. I think uh, you mentioned that just looking ahead to the game, uh, they might even be they hope um, they might even be odds on. You said to win the match, which is uh, I think you mentioned you've not seen that before. They are favourites to win the game. They're not odds on, but they are favourites. And I I can't, don't think I can ever remember. Malmo not being a uh, well, I can't remember Malmo being an underdog in a match that actually mattered. You know, end of season, there's been some dead rubbers, but um, it, it's very surprising, um, to me indeed. Yeah, and that's you know, maybe in the weekend preview show, I might be I might switch and say maybe back back Malmo because never bet against Malmo, of course, uh, in this league, no matter how um, you know, I, we'll talk about them in a bit, but you know. Wouldn't say they're playing badly, but no matter, you know, they haven't been on firing on all on all cylinders. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, this obviously the the Malmo game will be the the big test. Um, you know, that, that's a different level of, of team, of course. The likes of Degafors, the likes of uh, even Sirius. They kind of Sirius didn't do too badly, but you know, they got hit on a set piece um, and obviously a couple other goals. Um, so you know, you can't really um, can't get carried away. But at the same time, you've got the likes of. Um, you know, they've still got players to come back. Obviously, Bugai Trawali is still not ready yet. 
Um, they've had, obviously, so Swedberg is, is firing on all cylinders. He's the top goal scorer in the league at this moment in time. So, um, yeah, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a big game. We'll talk about Malmo in a minute, because obviously if we're going to preview the match, then we, we have to sort of um, move on to Malmo, maybe. But I just wanted to say, yeah, like, a, a, you know, big uh, big congratulations to Marcus Winters and his, and his team. Um, and a few comments just before the match already already getting spicy. Uh, and I hear Basara said before this game, after the game against uh, Sirius, he said, obviously, that all the attention is now on this game coming up on Monday, next Monday. And Basara said, welcome to hell. We will make it hell for them at the Tele 2 Arena, he said, after the match against Sirius. So it's already fighting words. Um, but uh, Lassa Nielsen of Malmo has already replied and said, it's absolutely not absolutely not hell. <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've played some even matches there, so it's not like going to hell. It's a fun place to play, to play in a fun atmosphere. Um, it will be a tough match, but no, 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 it's not hell. So already the mind games and the chit chat has started. <laughs> there's always some mind games, isn't there, with Sweden? Um, there's a lot of talk. It's always these teams in, in Stockholm, isn't it? But um, yeah, a little fair play to them so far. Marty, Marty Sifuentes, I've always rated him very highly as a manager. I, I had a sneaky suspicion he would do well here at Hammerby. And you can only, only beat what's in front of you, can't you, in fairness? So. Um, you know, here's me trying to sp- uh, spring a negative light onto things when really they deserve uh, a lot of uh, praise. So well done, Hammerby, on a great start. If, if You know, if they do beat Malmo or, you know, even a draw or play really well, take it to them, then it may well be they're in, they are in that title race. So uh, Malmo themselves, though, they're ticking along fairly uh, all right. Just one goal conceded. Typical sort of Malmo fashion. They've dropped a few points here and there. The draw against Varnamo was a big surprise. That that caught out a lot of punters. I know that. Um, might be lacking goals a little bit, but I mean, for them to be second now is pretty solid, isn't it? I mean, this is what Malmo do, isn't it? They 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 tick along. They're like a you know like a pouncer. You know, they're kind of I don't know like a crocodile in the river. You know, just be eyeing you up. You won't see them very often. You know, they are kind of just sneaking in the background and then. When you're not, when you're not, you know, when you expose a bit of leg, they'll pounce on you and bite your leg off. So, um, yeah, this is what Malmo do. They haven't been amazing, I don't think, so far this season. I mean, I got a bit, of, we got a bit of flack on tw- on Twitter at Nordic Football because I said they weren't. Uh, I didn't think they were amazing against the FK Jotterberg, and uh, a lot of people came back and threw threw the stats at me and all that kind of thing. Fair enough. First half they dominated them, and and it should have probably been more than one goal up. Obviously, they went in at half time, even, and then uh, scored a goal. Uh, Christensen just after half time penalty. But Christensen got injured, and when he went off, the, you know they didn't kill off. They didn't kill off Yevko Yotterborg, and I, I thought they could have made more of that match. Um, you know, and I, I commented saying that they weren't convincing. I know they have injuries at the moment, and a few other players off form and stuff like that. But uh, um, I didn't think it was that you know, controversial to say. But obviously, a lot of Malmo fans came back and threw the stats in terms of the um, xG and the amount of shots they had, which yeah, that's fair enough. Um, but I, I still stand by the fact I don't think they've been that convincing so far this season, Steve. One one nil at Kalmar. Um, they are dominating some games, but obviously Kalmar dominated possession in that game. Um, they got the win from Kisa Tellin, which we talked about. Then they drew with Elfsborg, uh, won all. And then obviously really strong against AOK, 3 0 win. Kisa Tellin got two. And Toivonen, and it was really great, by the way, to see Ola Toivonen and back after I think it was 11 months out. He's really fought back well. And, and that was an emotional moment for Toivonen, and uh, the veteran. Um, who helped fire them to the title, of course, two years ago. But uh, yeah, that was a really poignant moment for him. But then, obviously, Varnamo, Steve, first ever, first ever, um, you know, first ever game against Malmo and Osvenskan. They've never played in Osvenskan before, and they go and get a result against the champions. So you know, that's a big disappointment for a team like uh, Malmo. You wouldn't. Yeah, you wouldn't... I watched that game, and it, to be honest, it was it was a deserved nil nil. I thought for Varnamo, like Malmo just didn't look like they had enough penetration to me. And yeah, I'm looking at the X, some of the XG date, get data against IFK. If you take the penalty away, then it's only just over one goal expected. Yeah, the XG against was really low, and they, you know, IFK were never scoring. But sometimes they do lack a little bit of penetration, don't they, Mama? Yeah, exactly. And as I said in the tweet, I mean, I've got you know, there's mitigating circumstances. They have had players out. Martin Olsen obviously missed the um, the game against the EFCOR. Uh, Anders Christensen limped off. He's he's having his injury problems, and he's, he went off. And once he went off, there was a bit of a dip. You know, um, the youngster Hugo Larson came on. I, I do like him, but he's only you know he's on, only a teenager. Difficult for him to kind of uh, carry the can. Um, the Varnum game, as I say, was a big shock. 
fortunately that week there was quite a few other shocks you know not every team you know there's quite a few uh, disappointing results from other teams so that you know wasn't it didn't really register maybe in the way that you might think it would register because obviously Helsingborg uh, beat Elfsborg for example uh, Gisunsvall beat Kalmar so there was a few other you know ARK um, narrowly beat Varberg boys and obviously North Shopping drew 1-1 with uh, Hacken and, and EFK Jotterborg and, and Neurgarden drew so pretty much everybody dropped points really except Hammerby um, so it didn't didn't really massively affect them but yeah, Malmo are kind of, they're not necessarily firing on all, on all cylinders. I think there are a few issues with injuries as well. Like I've said, Kisa Tellin missed the EF core game as well. So, um, but as I said, one thing you can't do, and even the manager, for example, uh, sorry, the manager, uh, Milojevic, the new manager, he said in the last few weeks, they haven't been at the levels he expects. So he even he's been critical. I think only the AIK game, he was really, really complimentary about them after that. Um, but like I say, this is the thing with Malmo when they even when they when they play those top teams like AIK, you know, they they find a way to win. So, although Hammerby will be very confident, you can never write off Malmo FF. Wouldn't it be incredible if um Hammerby won the league this year over Malmo when you consider the manager swap that went on? You know? Yeah, you know what? That's a very interesting point because uh. <laughs> There is an argument to suggest that mate, who who got the better manager out of that deal? Well, yeah, I mean, they might they might have almost Hammerby might have been done a favour by Rosenborg as well, perhaps here. Who knows? Hundred percent, and I think that'll be the, that'll be the um. We'll learn a lot on we'll learn a lot on uh, on Monday. You know, at the end of the day, I really like the way Sofentes has, has got his team playing. Yes, they've had a little bit of fortune in terms of the run of fixtures, not the toughest of games, but at the end of the day they've got a good balance i think and they can get clean sheets and i think they've got players really firing on all cylinders don't forget they're in the swedish cup final as well they've been playing well in pre-season um so it's a you know they're, they're, they're looking quite good the, the big question is going to be you know the likes of william swedberg um you know how are they going to perform against against such a massive team like like a malmo ff so i'm just looking now at the top scorer list for our Svenskan this season and uh it's William Swedberg at Hammerby with uh, five goals. Incredibly, I actually left him out of my fantasy team this week because he, uh, well, I didn't think he was always a guaranteed starter at the moment, but then he's come up with a brace against uh, Sirius. But he's not even a striker, is he, Jonathan? I'm not. He's more of a midfielder, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is an incredible story so far. The um, the youngster, you know, we've talked about him on the, on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Nordic Football Podcast. If you want to get our 10 to watch, he's the one that we've revealed on Twitter. Um, he's one of those 10. Obviously, there's scouts all over him at the moment watching him. And yeah, 18, only 18 years old, Steve, and he's the top scorer in the league. Five games, five goals. He's not even played, uh, you know, 100% of the minutes in those games. But he's come up with a goal and, uh, you know, uh, he's come up with, a, well, he's averaging a goal every game, five five and five. And he's looked really, really good. And I'll tell you what, Steve, that, you know, I went on the Scouted Football Podcast, by the way. Anyone who who uh, listens to Scouted Football, they're, they're quite a big, reputable, um, you know, uh, organisation. I enjoyed my time on the show. Obviously, went on it to talk about um, the new season in Scandinavia. And we talked about Swedberg, of course, on, on that on that, uh, on that that show with Joe O'Donoghue. And Joe, I mean, we were talked about it on the show and I mentioned about Swedberg. I said, you know, although he's got this technical ability and, he, you know, he's a good player in, in terms of his positions he takes up and, and you know, he's a, he can play in a variety of positions, you know, as a sort of an attacking midfielder or he can play on either side. Could even argue he could play as a forward, but Salmani's kind of occupying that role. Um, the one thing about Swibert that's been really impressive, Steve, as I mentioned on that um, scouted football podcast, he's got a bit of a poacher's instinct, actually. You know, he's not just a sort of technical midfielder like you'd imagine, you know, like in, in for example, Buddha Glimp team, you know, that, that kind of technical profile where he's good on the ball, he can, he can beat a man. He, he's very sort of, uh, can go either side of, of players, you know what I mean? Not good off both feet, type, that kind of thing, good technique. He's very. He's actually a bit of a poacher. If you see his goals against uh, Sirius, one of them is from a second phase sort of flick on from a from a corner, and he's there at the back post to tap it in. Really brave as well, running to the edge of the post, um, putting his body on the line. And and the first goal as well, a similar thing, back post run. Um, so he's got the spectacular in him. If you check out his goal against Gif Sunsa, for example, left footed bangs it into the top corner, brilliant strike just outside the box. But he's also got the ability to sort of poach goals. I, I, I remarked about it on the. Um, in his first goal of the season against Helsingborg, you know, he, he was pretty brave, his finish, you know, um, although it wasn't the best of goals, he's there in the box, gets into the six yard area, 
um, makes a little nice run, of course, and 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 gets on the end of something. You know, s- sort of sniffs out a chance. So um, yeah, I, I I think you know a lot of people are talking about it at the moment. Scouts are talking about him. We said it on the Patreon, didn't we, Steve? About locomotive Moscow. The deal fell through. I think um, obviously that's going to be music to the ears of every scout in Europe at this moment in time because there's definitely a lot of interest in this player. And, and at, as the beginning of this season has shown, he's handling all that pressure with with real sort of grace. Yeah, they're not going to hang on to him either this summer. No chance. He'll be out of the league, uh, I would imagine. Um, or I mean, he would have been out of it already, wouldn't he? But, but for the Russian thing. So uh, top player right now, Swedberg at Hammerby, one to watch for sure. Um, and he's, you know, leading those goal scoring charts. Big thing for Hammerby. They'll try and get as much out of him as they can, you know, get themselves well clear at mid midway point of the season, eh? But um Yeah, definitely, uh, you're definitely crushing the dreams of Hammerby fans, aren't you? That's the first one he said. That's oh, what he said their run's no big deal. Now you're saying they're definitely gonna lose their star man. I hope if you're a Bajan fan listening to this, uh don't don't listen too much. Just don't get too disappointed because everything's rosy right now for you guys. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you are right. They, you know, it would be a tough to keep him. But uh, that is I it. know you would think I'm in like an A core or diff fan, wouldn't you? The way yeah, you're I'm definitely, coming definitely across the down. <laughs> I actually, I actually, I probably would. I would have. The the the, the, the talking to Stockholm. There was a derby, first one of the season. Aik beat to diff uh, one nil. Um, as usual, it's like watching a, a horror show, isn't it? With Diff involved in these, you know, the ghost appears. And it, unfortunately for them, it's not Casper the Friendly Ghost, is it? They they just have a knack of losing these uh, fixtures. And uh, AIK, they've had three home matches and won all three 1 0. The same problems away from home, but this, the Friends Arena, it's an absolute fortress, isn't it? 1 0 win for AIK. I watched uh, quite most of this game, actually. And it went uh, just as I expected, really. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested to get you, your own personal thoughts on, on the game, how it went and everything. But um, funnily enough, Steve, I mean, this is a bit of a random tangent, but I was at a game this evening in non-league and I put out a little tweet, just sort of a, a picture. And a good friend of the pod who, who actually follows this podcast, I believe, uh, Nate, his name's Nathan, he, uh, he DM'd me and said, I'm at the game as well. And so we met up with each other and uh, first time I've ever met him, obviously, sometimes, you know, you get to meet people from Twitter, which was nice. And he said to me, uh, he actually was at the game. He was at AIK Uruguay because he's uh, he's Kenyan and he knows Otieno. I hope he doesn't mind me dropping that in this conversation. But um, he, he said to me, he went out there and it was, I saw his tweets from the game. I said, I thought you were in uh, Sweden. And he's like, yeah, he just he just returned. And he was telling me, you know, the atmosphere the first time he's been to a Stockholm derby. And he, he was raving about it himself. So it just sums it up. He said it was incredible like, atmosphere, incredible to be at a Stockholm derby. And um, like you said, Steve, for for those of us listening, I mean, I said it on the weekend betting preview um, on Patreon. I said, if you could bet on there to be flares and, and, and the game to be stopped at some point, then put your house on it. And they, lo and behold, halfway through the match, massive sort of black smoke when plumes came through the air and they had to sort of stop the game for a bit to, to let them, let them clear up. But um yeah, so a one nil win. Obviously, you get the usual fanfare. It's a game I really, really want to go to. The Tifos looked incredible as usual. Of course, Steve, we can't, um, you know, we can't take for granted fans back in the stadiums. You know, this is we're now sort of really starting to get full full stadiums again, which is which is wonderful to see. And as you said, the ghost carried on. You know, you guys just can't seem to get their heads into these matches for some reason, um, and they lost it one nil. I mean, what what was your perspective on the match, Steve? Well, I, I kind of called it in a way, didn't I? I said, what, 1-0 AIK, probably of yellow cards, maybe a red. That was about the only thing I got wrong. But um, to be honest, I think it probably should have been a draw. Diff might even argue they shaded the match in terms of chances. But the, the, there's always a, a bad mistake that they seem to make in these games. And I think for me, the goalkeeper didn't do very well for the goal with Stefanelli. Um, it was a, a cross came in, it's definitely headed it home, and, and the keeper basically kind of it was a little bit walkabout, really. And his, his name is uh, Zetterstrom, I do believe. And I'd seen this coming, I think I said on one of the previous episodes that I don't like his uh, what I don't like him on crosses at all. I think he's a good shot stopper and re- reflexes and things like that, but I do not like him from crosses, and um, it cost them here really that goal. And then you know, AIK did what they had to do to win the match, and your garden 
too many key players freed in these derbies for me it was it was quite a feisty one defenses were generally on top and um like i say the, the aik just seems to they seem to want it more sometimes in these matches they i think they're really good in the derbies uh stefanelli you, you you said he probably would score and lo and behold he pops up it's um it's quite a mental thing into these sort of games and uh They'll be delighted with the three points and your garden at the moment, your garden are a little bit flattering to deceive, in my opinion. Yeah, massively. And uh, after the game, um, there was a bit of a little bit of beef, actually. And uh, we do probably surprise, surprise. (laughs) I mean, first of all, the game was temporarily suspended, as we mentioned. Uh, You know, you got the fact of Jordan Jordan Larson being there, the pressure on him, the pressure on uh, Victor Edvards, and they've got the pressure of the you know the um there's just the derby in general as you, as you mentioned uh it's 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 very it's very sort of controversial the game isn't it it's very controversial and um yeah a few a few things sort of kicked off uh i mean the big i suppose one of the big one of the big talking points before the match was um that ARK kind of were missing some players and, and Bartos Grizzly like, didn't really want to say, uh, you know, who they were going to be missing. But in the end, Bar- um, Bilal Hussein came in and I think that was key key to this match, actually. Bilal Hussein, uh, I thought he was sensational. Uh, we have talked about him on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Nordic Football Podcast. We've done a player profile on him and reviewed him. If you want to know more about him, I think uh, if, you, if, you know, if you're a scout and that interests you to, to sort of know more about him, uh, I think he's a really, really good player, actually, Hussein. And uh, he got the assist for the goal. Lovely cross into the box. It was like De Bruyne, wasn't it? The ball. I thought it was... Yeah, uh, it, was a, it was a really good cross. It was the one that certainly teased the goalkeeper. I'll give. I'll say that. Yeah, I thought it was a, a, a peach of a cross. And um, just having him back, he's been injured for the first few games of this season. And, you know, to have him back, I think... Uh, I think he really showed his ability in this game. He wasn't... He was still a little bit, you know, not 100% fit, I don't think. Um, but after the game, Milosevic, Alexander Milosevic, the, the, the defender, came back and said he, you know, he lifted them. He said uh, he's one of Osvenskan's best players. Um, he said he's a top player. I really like playing with him. He finds me in pockets. Um, and, you know, even Stefanelli pl- praised him as well. So there's a real sense that Bilal Hussein coming back into the team will add a lot. Um, but, yeah, it's Stefanelli, you know, is another talking point. He seems to pop up in these derbies. You always get sort of, um, sometimes you get, don't you, if you get that player, I mean, Anthony Langa, maybe Manchester United against Leeds. Divo Origi against Everton. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, Stefanelli is definitely the Origi of uh, of AIK because he he popped up with a goal and um, he seems to do it in these derbies. He's got winners in in previous games in in the last few years, and he, he's done it again. The the other talking points Steve, I just wanted to uh, mention um, is Victor Edvardson. Now I know you've got him in your fantasy team. What what do you think of him? Um, he's he delivered for me week one, didn't he? <laughs> but um, he hasn't done much since, but I'm hoping they've got a double game week coming up. So I'm hoping he can fill his boots against two shit teams. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Steve, there's been a bit of controversy about him because um, I mentioned to you beef and it, this seems to happen in Sweden where it doesn't really, you don't get this in the Premier League where people will just openly call out other, other players. You know, it's all very nice, isn't it, in the Premier League? It's very, as I mentioned to you, the comment there from Basara about welcome to hell and you know, the, the back comments from the Malmo players. Same thing happened in the AIK derby. Now, um, Victor Advance has been talking quite a lot uh, since he's moved to Eurogarden. Um, obviously, a big move. He turned down. I think he mentioned that he turned down. I think he had said he turned down AIK or something like that. And, um, you know, just generally he's been talking a fair bit. Uh, I think he he said that the, 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 the defenders of AIK are quite slow and sluggish. Uh, and I think he specifically called out Mikhail Lustig. <clears throat> so um, there was a lot of controversy after the win. Obviously, uh, they 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 celebrated kind of thing in his. You know, they tried to celebrate at him, and um, it just got a very very. It got a bit ugly, mate. He, he Victor Advarsen didn't like it. He said that he found it cowardly and, and disgusting. He said that you know to celebrate and because because basically they celebrated and you know that you know what it's like. Obviously in derbies, you rub it in a little bit. He said, um, players who've been abroad their entire career, they should celebrate with a bit more humility, essentially be a bit more professional. Um, but it definitely riled AIK, I have to say, and Farson's comments before the game, because Lustig came out and said, this is not the first time, you know, you need a bit of extra spice. Um, and he said, 
maybe it has been in the back of my mind a little bit, people talking to me. He said he had a great season in the bottom team last year. Um, but he can, you know, he if he wants to talk about me, then he can talk about me in the rematch. Um, and a comment uh, from, I'm just going to read out a comment from um, Milosevic, Steve. He said after the game, uh, and I think you'll quite like this comment, he said, it's okay. He said, I'll comment on Advarsen, by the way. He said, sometimes it's difficult for some players. You become the king of the village, but a farmer in your in the capital. <laughs> now, I don't know what you think of those comments, Steve, but essentially, <laughs> essentially saying about Edvardson that you know he was king of Degafors. You know he had this big reputation, scored all those goals last season, but he's coming to Bjorgard now, and he's described him as quote unquote a farmer of the farmer in the capital. So, real bit of bad blood there, a bit of beef, and obviously, personally, I love it. I think there's a, I, I love that sort of thing. Um, I don't think you get enough of it in the Premier League these days, but I know some people might not like it, but uh, it definitely kicked off and there was a lot of chit-chat between the two teams. I think if you're going to talk the talk, you've got to walk the walk, haven't you? And um, look, he has... I don't think he's been played that badly in his five games, um, but it's been disappointing that he couldn't... You know, they didn't score against Mialbi and they didn't score against RK. And, you know, it seems against two robust defences... That he hasn't made much of an impact, and you would have expected him to be that difference maker for them. So, look, at the end of the day, I think they're fully entitled to comment on him. If he's going to say stuff before the games, you do rub it in a bit, don't you? Simple as that, you know. With uh, with diff- AIK, interesting side. I actually think if they can sort their away form out, they can title challenge. They're, they're, they're good. They'll win most of their matches at home. They won't drop many points here, but away from home, the same as last season, they just they seem useless at times. Um, they're like a completely different side. So I think if they can sort their way form out, though, there's um, there's a real resolve in that AIK squad. I, I quite like them. Yeah, definitely. The, these derbies always have that emotion, and 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 I think I think AIK are a little bit under the radar because of that that beating they took from uh, Malmo. Um, but yeah, as I say, I think I think with Edvardson, you know, he's come with that sort of big price tag. Relatively speaking, he had a lot of interest from a lot of clubs and turned down some club big clubs to come to Deer Garden been a lot of talk and he's he's done a lot of interviews as well and I think it'd be interesting to see how he reacts to this because there's going to be a, you know this is not Degafors this is your garden there's going to be a lot more pressure this season on him started well but I've seen a lot of him in interviews at the moment I think that's been picked up on by the ARK players here and uh, obviously he, he called out Listig before the match he called them out after the game saying that they've been celebrating too much and uh, they've given a little bit back to him so yeah the, I'm sure the return leg is going to be very very tasty yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk about the bottom of the table in a minute. But first, uh, I just want to give a little bit of love to IFK Gothenburg. Actually, they've they're in fourth place. They've just lost to Malmo, which is no disgrace away from home. You put, you tweeted something from the NFP account on um, the match before Diff, and about the fans and um, the the great atmosphere that was going on before the game. There was a rendition of this song they 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 sing before a match um, kicked off at Gamla Ulavi, and I've got to say. It really, uh, I took, I really enjoyed uh, watching that, Jonathan. It was a great clip, and the, the whole stadium was in complete unison. And they've had a good start to the season, haven't they? Let's be honest. Um, you know, I say no disgrace losing to Malmo, but they, they seem more optimistic times than IFK at the moment. They've been okay. I think they've dealt with the games. They've played well. I, I think if you look at the underlying data, I'm not, not massively convinced. Uh, I think as it stands at the moment, according to our partners, Y Scout, there I think they're sixth bottom of the league in in terms of uh, XG. I think they've uh, the tenth in XG, which is I think five point two two goals expected, six scored. Um, <clears throat> so they very much rely on Marcus Berg. I think there is a I think the one thing I'd say, which I definitely agree with you, there's a big there's a positive atmosphere at the moment, um, and long may that obviously continue. I think you know they um, they've had a few seasons where they've been really not settled. And I think this season, their team, I think they've said it in the season preview, the team's slightly more settled. I get a more feeling that you know who's going to start relatively settled team and relatively comfortable team. You know, there's not too many. The balance is not too bad. They've got a lot of veterans, as they usually do. They've got a lot of youth, as they usually do. But the, the balance isn't too bad. They haven't got too many hangers on. Um, so I think that tighter squad is is benefiting them. As you say, 10 points, you know, they're doing quite well so far. And they've had some tough games. Let, let's be clear. You know, Malmo away, Diff at home, Hacken away. Obviously, they won the derby. Those are tough matches. Obviously, they started with Varnamo and they got a win. But Varnamo, to be fair to them, have, have been quite good. So, um, yeah, I think there's positive signs for for EF Core. 
the next game's Kalmar home, ARK away, Varberg at home, Ellsborg away. And I think those four games will learn a lot about them. The likes of Kalmar, you know, can they get past a team like Varberg who are a bit difficult? ARK away is a tough match. We'll learn a lot more about them, I think, in the next few weeks because I'm not, I'm not too sure what to say about them in terms of can they genuinely stay in that uh, in that top tier of of, of, of the league. But uh, yeah, very, very good start at the moment. And like, like you say, the unity and you know that 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 um, that performance before the Uruguayan game was quite emotional, wasn't it? it was uh, it had me wanting to get on a plane immediately and go home back to Stock uh, back to Gothenburg. So yeah, it's uh, good vibes at the moment. It was very emotional, I must say. I enjoyed that. I can I, I really like that about uh, IFKG. It um, you can the fans really get behind them. I'll give them that. And uh, I noticed it end of last season as well. There were some matches where. Uh, you know, I think that home crowd really got them home um, towards the end of the season. So, um, just re- before we finish this really section, down at the bottom there, um, Helsingborg on four points, Sundsvall three, Degerfors, no points on the board uh, at the moment. Two goals scored, ten conceded. Not good for them, uh, Jonathan. Um, I mean, I, the first match at Jorgarten, I thought they played okay. I didn't expect them to be on no points now, but... Uh, Quite simply, what is going wrong for Degaforce? I think they've been horrendous. I think so far they've been the worst team in the league for me. Um, just ban- balance is all wrong. Two goals scored, ten conceded. Some games have been tight, but I, I just think they're very uh, they're very open. Um, they are, I'd probably argue, comfortably the worst team I've seen so far um, in the league. So I don't, I'm not surprised that the points uh, they've got zero points, kind of reflected in in the performances. I caught the Varnamo game. Varnamo, I thought, were a lot better than them in every area. Varnamo uh, won two nil, and to be fair to Varnamo, they're looking quite good as well. By the way, they haven't um, they haven't lost at home yet. Drew nil nil with Sirius. Drew nil nil with Malmo, and, and obviously uh, beat Degerfors at home. So that's big. And they're only two away games: EFK away, Elsborg away. They're, you know, those are tough games. Lost four one and two one, but even the Elsborg game, it was quite tight till, till sort of towards the end of the match. You know, the second, final third of the game really. They the substitutes. Um, Ida Gudjonsson's son, by the way, came on and scored two goals. Um, but yeah, I, I'm worried about Degafors, I'll be honest. I, I just think that th- that three four three shape is so open at the moment. Um, maybe they could turn it around because going forward, you know, they do they do try and threaten. Don't get me wrong, they're not a defensive side. They do try and offer something, but they just they just they're just so open in the games I've seen so far. And um, you know, I thought against Kalmar they weren't too bad, but by the time they kind of sorted themselves out, they were already one 0 down. Oliver Berg. Uh, got a goal in the sixth minute, and then obviously they've had some tough. You know, to be fair to them, you, you know, you mentioned Hammerby. Degerfors are almost the opposite. They've had tough games. Dual Garden away, Hacken at home, uh, Kalmar away. Who were, you know they were playing quite well. I think Kalmar have been all right. Hammerby at home, of course, you don't want to be playing them. And then Varnamo, like I say, that you know they're kind of they're they're high, aren't they? Because this is the first ever season in the Svensk, and you probably that sort of promoted side. You don't you don't want to play them too early, do you? You want them mid season when they're they've had a few defeats and the confidence is down. So. They have had a tough run of games. Maybe it can turn in the next few weeks, but um, they're playing Gif- they're playing Elsborg and then Gifsundsvall away on the 9th of May. That's a massive game, in my opinion, because that could already sort of start to outlie who are going to be the re- relegation favourites. And then the week after that, they've got Helsingborg, and then the week after that, Varberg away. So th- those are three huge games, I think, and we'll learn a lot more about where they're going for. Are they really that bad, or is it just a tough start? We'll learn a lot more about that. Do you think their manager, I think it's managers actually, um, it, 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 it are, have been a bit naive to keep using this this really open 3-4-3 three, three shape against uh, some of the good teams? Yeah, well, we have, you know, it has worked in some, it worked in the last season a little bit, didn't it? And we have talked about kind of lack of goals, haven't we? In, in Osvenskan, you mentioned it on one of the shows where some teams aren't really, you know, there's been a bit more kind of um, cagey games maybe. So, I wouldn't say you could criticise them, and 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 let's let's be fair to them. They do have some decent players in the team. Um, you know their xG isn't terrible. It's kind of they, they their xG is actually six point three six, and they've scored two goals. So you know it's not it's not awful. You know they're one of the top. They're one actually of the top eight for xG. Um, so to be fair to them, maybe it's going to turn around any minute. But <clears throat> and I, I do I've quite liked um, just to give a shout out to one or two players in, in the team that I've seen. Um, I thought I think Joe that is it Joe Giao. I think he started quite well actually. By the way, uh, he looks quite decent. Joseph Giao, he's come from America, um, from Cincinnati. He's he's looked probably the most lively player I would say. Um, but I think 
yeah, you mentioned that the, the, they're very open, but I, I also just think they're lacking quality, if I'm honest. There's certain areas in that team that I really think they're maybe, I'm not going to name names now, give them a bit of a break, but I think some of the players are, are not at the level, maybe you could argue. And um, some of them have got quite a lot to prove. The likes of Campos is still adapting to the league. Maybe he's quite new. He's looked quite lively in spells. But I think there's one or two, maybe two or three players in that team, Steve. I, don't, I personally don't think they're all spent can level, actually. I think they've been um, I think they've been found out. So um, I do like Gravius in midfield. I think he's looked very, very lively. He looks a, he looks a good player, actually. Um, but, <clears throat> yeah, I'd be worried about Degafor as far as you. Yeah, concerning times uh, for Degaforce. Right, well, we'll take a break now. And uh, after the interval, Norwegian matters are going to be discussed. So uh, join us in a little bit. Welcome back to the latest episode of the Nordic Football Podcast. My name is Jonathan Faduba and I'm joined as always by Steve Wiss, my colleague and friend at Meet Man Soccer. Um, before we crack on with Norway and the Elite to Syrian and catch up with everything going on over there, I uh, just want to sort of a public service announcement. Uh, we do have our latest Scout bloggers out this month. Um, so obviously follow Scout, our partners. They are the providers of video analysis and data, of course, um, very well known at Scout, And uh, our latest blog looks at Kalmar. Now, I decided to have a little look at them because I was very, very impressed with their first two games. And I've written an article this month on sort of Henrik Riesdrom and their sort of possession-based style. So if you would like to have a look at that, then obviously go to wirescout.com or follow them at Wirescout on Twitter. And I'm sure you'll find the links there. Uh, we've also posted them on our Twitter account, at Nordic Footpod. Um, just talking about sort of Oliver Berg and their, their tactical shape, their 4-3-3. So um, if you're a Calma fan... Uh, I know it got a lot of good feedback on social media anyway. A lot of Calmar fans, even the official count, uh, tweeted it. Um, and I believe Henrik Riesstrom even might have read it, according to reports. So, um, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy that. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to give a plug for that. If you haven't seen it yet, you might enjoy that reading. I think you've kind of cursed them, Jonathan, since this article. They've lost two games since it got published, I think. Yeah. They're, they're down in, in 11th place now, Kalmar, And uh, they've got tiny, they've got the Minnows Varnamo. Just a, a point behind them. So they've got to up themselves because, you know, you maybe would uh, expect a little bit more from Kalmar. Varno in 12th, by the way. Fair fair dues for them. I mean, I know they're a pretty small side, aren't they? Yeah, I've got to give a massive shout out to, uh, to, to Varno before we crack on with um, Norway because although, uh, yeah, Kalmar, I mean, although they've they've had a few decent, poor, poor results in the recent matches, they're still uh, second best in the league for ball possession. 57.1% position average. Steve. That is incredible for all Svenskan, I think. Better than Malmo, better than Jurgarden, better than Hammerby. Uh, so, North Shopping actually top of the league for, for a possession so far. But um, yes, uh, and obviously they played each other, didn't they? North Shopping got the win. But yeah, Kalmar doing very well. But Varno, yeah, got to give them a little bit of a shout out before we, uh, before we move on to part two. Um, they've done really well. I watched the game against Degafors. And I have to say, I totally wrote them off at the start of this season. Um, but they've, 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 they've shown me that they have something about them at Varnamo and definitely got to give them a shout. Five games played, one win, two draws, two defeats. Obviously, they've got a point against Malmo, a huge result of that. Uh, very tight ground, Steve, very sort of uh, tight atmosphere. I think they will be a tough place to go, sort of a, like a kind of like a Burnley maybe of the Premier League. I think they're not necessarily in playing style. They've got some exciting sort of Brazilians. They've got a few decent players in that team. Antonsen, of course, uh, formerly of Halmstad last season. He uh, got a goal against Degafors in a 2 0 win and Oscar Johansson. Um, they weren't even that bad against Elsborg, and even though it was 4 1, they weren't terrible. Uh, and even though EF Corway, they gave it a good go. Um, but they've got a little bit of talent in that Varnamo side. So, um, I mean, they've got a lot of up tough up upcoming games. I still think they're going to struggle. But uh, yeah, just a shout out to Varnamo because they've definitely started the season on a positive way. Yeah, well done to Varnamo. Uh, if they keep that up, then yeah, they'll be en route to survive in the league. And. Uh... That'd be no mean feat for a club of their structure. Definitely. Now let's let's move on to uh, the elite Serie. We are going to talk about fantasy a little bit, maybe in a future show. Um, but in terms of the league, I don't know if you've got the league table, but I know that in Sweden, I'm doing very well in, in fantasy at the moment. I'm sixth in the UK, uh, 12th in the Nordic League, which I'm happy about. 
Uh, at the moment, sixth in Enqvist is top of the sweet uh, Nordic Football Podcast League. Jimmy Schlichting is second place. So um, the, the, yeah, the race is on there. I'm, I'm, I'm top ten. Who you knows? Top twelve. Sorry. Let's see if I can push into the top ten. But um, over in Norway, Steve, we've had a couple of rounds, haven't we? Because there was a whole round in one get in one day, uh, most recently, wasn't there? I don't blame you for singing while you're winning, Jonathan, here. Um, with your fantasy, you're doing a lot better. Um, well done to your start in, in Sweden. The less said about my elite Assyrian fantasy performance, the best, I think. I'm, uh, I'm, not, even in, in, I'm, not, I'm not even inside the top 15,000 in Norway. Wow. I do, be- I do better in the Swedish fantasy, mate. I don't know why. But, that is um, incredible. I really have struggled badly, mightily in the, in the elite Assyrian fantasy the last two years. But um, well, yes. I had a shocking, I had a shocking round. Although we've still got, there's still a midweek round, isn't there? We have still got a couple more games. There right? is, yeah. Um, but yeah, let's. I mean, just to just to recap, obviously we've had two rounds since uh, our last uh, free show. So I'm just going to recap all the results, um, so everyone's up to date. We had on the 18th of April, we had uh, Arlison two, Tromso two, Halgerson nil, Strums Gosset one. Jerv 1, Christensen 0, Hamcam 3, Sanderfield 0, Mulder 1, Lestrom 2, Odd 2, Viking 1, Salzburg 1, Rosenborg 1, and Budiglip 5, Wallerenga 1. We haven't even talked about um, Glimt against Roma yet, but I know you probably don't want to speak about that. And then just in the round that's gone, obviously, like we say, we've got a few more games uh, coming up, but uh, in the most recent round, Odd 2, Arlison 3, Strom score set 0, Sanderfield 5, big result there. Christensen 2, Hamcam 2, Lillestrom 1, Haugerson 0, Trumza 2, Sarsburg 5, Wallerenga 1, Jerv 0, Viking 2, Buda Glimp 0, big result there, Buda Glimp losing, and Rosenborg 0, Molden 0 in the sort of clash of two, two big guns. In terms of um, the weekend preview show, Steve, you had a big win this week. You had Christensen, Hamcam over 2.5 goals. Uh, well done to you there. Obviously, our, our, our Patreon show, patreon.com slash... Nordic football podcast. You can grab our predictions for that. But um, what have been your impressions of the last two rounds so far? There's a lot of random shit going on in Norway. Actually, um, I think it's become a, a quite a difficult lead to predict at the minute. There's um, there's only a couple of teams that have uh, avoided defeat. That's Rosenborg, who've had three out of four draws, and Lillestrøm. But everyone else has lost at least once. There's a lot of random stuff going on. I mean, I was playing cricket on Saturday and I've got to be honest, I nearly spat my sausage roll out in surprise when I saw the Godset result. 5-0 to Sanderfield. I still haven't actually caught up with that game yet or the Arlison win uh, against Odd on the same day. I saw those outcomes and I was like, what on earth is going on? And, you know, on even on Sunday, Sarpsborg beat Tromso 5-2 away. Um, some of the XGs for these matches, by the way, are very uh, different to what the scoreline would suggest. So I think there's been quite a lot of matches that are rather um, not un- unjust results, but there's been some, honestly, there's some very strange, um, some strange shit going down, as they would say. Jonathan. It's, uh, I can't make head or tail of certain things right now. Well, one of the biggest things, as you say, some crazy stuff going on. Lillister on top of the league. I mean, I know you've praised them in recent seasons, but that, I mean, that, you look at the top three there, Lillestrøm first, 10 points, Viking second, nine points. And then you've got Champions Glimp third and seventh, joint with, joint with Sarpsborg uh, of all teams, Mulder and Allison as well, all on seven points. Um, I mean, that is that is quite a uh, quite a league table. I know it's early days, four games played. Um, but let's start with um, that Viking Glimp surprise defeat. What has gone on here? And I know you. This is your chance to sort of talk about the Roma game as well, if you'd like, and just have a quick mention for that. But what you know, what's going on, Viking? Because that's that's a big surprise. Yeah, that is a big surprise for me because usually Buda Glimp, they've had the wood over Viking over the last two or three years. They, you know, it's not, Viking usually lose that game like three two or three one or something. To actually keep a clean sheet against Buda Glimp is very very rare domestically. There was a match last season, uh, Rosenborg nil, Glimp nil, towards the end of the year, where it was on a very frozen pitch at Lurkendal, and you could understand it. But I can hardly think of another time where Buda Glimt didn't score a goal uh, domestically. It just hasn't happened under Jessup and Hudson uh, often. But Viking, they played each other just three days before in the Cup, actually. Um, the Norwegian Cup final is this weekend. 
Mulder against Buda Glimp, what a tasty affair that's going to be. But uh, Glimp beat Viking 2-1 in the semi-final. And I think Viking kind of learned their lesson from that and um, they changed formation for the league match. They looked a lot more solid defensively. But I said, didn't I, this in the preview show, at some point, Buda Glimp, these matches are going to catch up with them. And there was always going to be a game where they kind of fell flat and this was the one. And this is the this is the result of a culmination of these European ties, um, cup semis and quarters, things like that. There's no doubt about it that um, it eventually was going to catch up with them and they'll be pleased to have a whole week of rest now ahead of this cup final and i think they can probably kick on um after that but um viking got stuck in the match got a bit feisty there was one particular unsavory incident involving old Ulrich sultan as the gloom captain where he need kevin cabran in the back he might get suspended for that retrospectively for the even for the cup final but viking kind of got there got stuck in a bit and made it a bit of a warrior battle and I don't think Glimp liked that particularly, um, but a very important win for Viking. I think a victory, actually, we have to take them seriously, Viking. They could title challenge if they're going to have that sort of mentality this season um, to win ugly almost, if needed, which is something they haven't shown in the last two or three years, then maybe they can they can be up there fighting. It was an impressive performance, fully deserved win. Uh, they did everything right in, in that match. Yeah, I mean, you do have them fourth in the table, so they, are they kind of uh, that was your preseason prediction them to finish fourth. Viking, are they sort of doing even better than you expected, or is this kind of par for the course so far? I mean, you just mentioned there they could even even challenge for the title potentially. Yeah, they're doing they are doing better than I expected. They lost against Odd, but I think really they deserve something out like that match. Um, they the problem I've always had with Viking is they can see too many goals. Like they, they get involved in these basketball type matches and they always lose some of them, but they've had three clean sheets out of four. Like, I'm not really sure what's changed too much. I think a couple of players have looked really strong, like uh, Gianni uh, Stensness, especially, I think, has looked an absolute rock at the back. Bricalo as well has seems to have kicked on this year in terms of his, his, his ability. So, you know that if the problem was always defense, if they kept three clean, three clean sheets out of four, including one against Buda Glimt, then that is a very positive sign for Viking. They seem to have more control on matches this year, and I think they do have to be taken seriously. They could, if this title challenge, uh, the title battle becomes a, a really close one, like the Swedish one was what three years ago, you know, it went to the last day, then they can be in the mixer. They don't want. What they don't want is a team like Mulder or Glimp to just run away with it because I don't think they can win it that way. But if if it if this m- remains a close title battle, a number of, several teams can definitely be in the hunt, including Viking. Now, in terms of fantasy football and, and just in general, a lot of people I've seen on Twitter talking about uh, Zlatko Tripic. Mm. Now he's got three goals. He's joint top scorer in the league at this moment in time with three, uh, along with Alexander Rude Twitter, Michael Mygaard. And Mohamed Ofkir and Sigurd Haugen as well. Um, just to give us a little bit of information on Trippage because he's someone a lot of people talking about him, um, just fantasy wise and just in general. What you know? What are your thoughts of them? Got the winning goal for them in that Norwegian Cup final a few years ago. You remember Paul the Northman came in uh, on on the show and, and gave his account of the game and uh, yeah, Trippage was from the penalty spot. Then he left the league. I uh, can't remember exactly what club he went to, but he came back last season. And um, look, he's a, he's a class act, simple as that. He's a predominantly a left winger, but they're using him more sometimes as a striker at the moment. And um, him and Berisha, Tripic Berisha duo partnership is 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 really they've got a great connection, and they've got fun. Great, they've got great technical qualities, but they're so mentally strong. They just want to win. They want to score goals. They want to, they want Viking to win. And um, yeah, he, he's a real class act, Zach Tripic. I'm a big fan of him. Um, uh, of course, I've not got him in my fantasy team, have I? If I did have, I'd be laughing. But um, yeah, he uh, he's done really well so far. Fantastic stuff. And yeah, it was a lovely goal as well from uh, Seb Bulonson, uh, the second goal for for um, V King against Glimpton in that 2 0 win. I mean, Steve, just you mentioned that Glimpton's a bit, maybe a bit fatigued. They've had a lot of games, they've had Europe. Uh, the fallout from the um, the Roma game, what was the fallout of that? Because we previewed that match in our last free show and obviously they lost it. They got absolutely battered in that game, um, really. 
Could you just give us a bit of insight into the fallout from the match? Because obviously, Kietzil Knutsen wasn't, um, you know, wasn't able to be on the touchline. There was a lot of comments that you talked about that he made, uh, saying he might even quit football, that kind of thing. Um, what's been the sort of fallout since that Roma game? And just give us a quick overview on the match and what happened, just for anyone who might not have sort of listened to, you know, who listens to the show, maybe hasn't, hasn't, hasn't heard everything. Well, yeah, Roma obviously battered them in the second leg. Um, I think what the final score was uh, five nil or something like that. They they were totally dominant, and you know Knutson wasn't on the sidelines because he got banned. And um, you know Roma's extra quality, the hundred hundreds of millions of uh, quality players. Uh, in f- finally, at the fourth time of uh, asking this season, managed to get one over Buda Glimt, and uh, you can't knock that. And uh, you know for Glimt, it was obviously disappointing. Uh, result uh, that they ended uh, Europe that way, but um, they, they bounced back quite well. Just three, four days later, they smashed Volarenga at home. One of the best performances I've seen Buda Glimp play um, in the in the Knutson era. So you know, for, to get that sort of immediate bounce back just shows how good a side they are. And then they followed that up just three days later with that cup semi final win. But eventually, even for Glimt, it's going to take its toll. And I knew I knew at some point they were going to have a flat game. It was just a question of when it was going to happen. And um, you know, it nearly d- didn't happen. They're nearly so good that it didn't. They managed to avoid it, but it finally came against the Viking. There, I think they'll learn plenty from Roma. Um, you know, they there's this talk about our oh, Mourinho. They need to. You know, you can learn. You can they can learn some lessons from Mourinho about how you can sort of you know gain this sort of mental edge. Um, because there's no doubt it was rather unsavoury what went on in the build-up. But, um, you know, if, if they sort of combine their excellent football with uh, a little bit of shithousery from uh, from time to time, then they really could become an even more stronger machine. Well, yeah, I mean, it ended 4-0, not 5-0, to be fair to them. Uh, it was a uh, hat-trick, wasn't it, from uh, Nicolo Zaniolo and Tammy Abraham as well got in, in on the act. I mean, just to be clear, get to Knutson still at Glimp. He's fine. Everything was everything's blown over all right. He's not left football. No, 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 no. Of course, he's not left football yet. And um, you know, I think uh, I think they can learn plenty from from that. Like I say, I think they can come out of it stronger. And um, I certainly still expect them. And I certainly expect them to bounce back from the um, the defeat against Viking. I think they'll win the Norwegian Cup against Malta. And I still think they'll go on to win the title, the Leeds Area title this season. Fantastic stuff. Let's move on uh, to uh, who else do you want to talk about? Let's have a little look. You've sort of pointed, I mean, it was a fairly obvious one to, to talk about next at the bottom. I mean, we talked about Lillestrøm, haven't we? Uh, I don't know if you want to talk about them a bit more, but Haugesund, mm, zero yeah. points. They're the Degafors of Norway. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually felt a little bit sorry for them on Saturday. Um, sorry, Sunday even. Um, I was I, I betted on Lillestrøm to beat them. I thought Lillestrøm would win easily, but actually Hagerson should have won this game. They were the better team. Um, there was two incredible saves from um, Mads Christensen, the Lillestrøm keeper. One of them was insane reflexes. I've talked about him before. Did a Wisecout blog on him even, but he really um, looked first class in that match. That's when when you need a goalkeeper to step up for you. He totally did it for for Lillestrøm in that game. I mean, for Hagerson, I, I always have this saying in, in football, bad things happen to bad teams. And I'm starting to think they're this bad team because they're finding ways to lose games of football now. Like the first two matches, they were really just awful. They outplayed and conceded way too many chances. They've now lost two matches, 1-0, a couple of late goals. And that, for me, that is not a good sign. You don't want to get in the habit of losing matches late by the odd goal, do you? At least don't. Uh, you know, at least avoid defeat. And it must be a difficult place to be in Huddleston right now. It was a better performance against Lillestrøm. If they can back that up in the next fixture, then, you know, maybe they can get some points. But, you know, nothing on the board right now. They've not got a very big squad. They're missing Martin Samuelson to injury. They need him back as soon as possible. Um, They're they're not, there's not a lot of positives with Huddleston right now. I mean, I did say start the, the, the pre-season podcast it was going to be a difficult year it might be even more difficult than i originally anticipated yeah they, you know they've always sort of hovered around mid-table haven't they lower mid-table they've never really looked 
really that bad. But this, this is a horrendous start, like you've said. Uh, only two goals scored as well in four matches. Um, <clears throat> Christensen as well, my boys, a, a second mm. one, one point. Um, we can maybe talk about them another time. But is there any any other teams that you'd say, after four matches, have either surprised you in how good they look? I mean, you've mentioned Viking, of course, but are there any other teams that have surprised you in how good they look? Or conversely, in how bad they look, besides Halgerson and Viking? Well, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about for Christensen as well, although that match against Ham Cam, I will just talk about that game. It was a great two-all draw, really good advertisement for uh, Norwegian football, actually. Both teams really went for it. I think it was a deserved draw. Ham Cam scored a late equaliser, but they were worthy of a point. It was good attacking football on show, and I, I, I've seen some positives from Christensen. I think they can get start to bounce back again soon if they keep playing like that. But I'll tell you who I am worried for, Jonathan. That's Strom's godsend. Now, I said in one of our Patreon shows that Hargis and Strom Godset, which Godset wouldn't one nil, was one of the worst games of football I've seen in Elite Serian for quite some time. It just looked a game between two extremely poor teams. And it's kind of that that may well be how it is. I mean, Godset have lost five nil, five nil at home to Sanderfjord. Now I I, so I can't comment on this game yet because I've not seen it. I was I was on the cricket field when this was uh, occurring, but I can't believe that. Like, you can't lose. You can't be losing at home to Sanderfield, let alone, let alone losing 5-0. Someone replied to me, I think it was Tom Dent replied to me on, on Twitter, that it could have been eight if, if Sanderfield had, had take their chances. But look, by the sounds of it, Godset did have opportunities in this game as well. But I'm concerned for them. Yeah, they finished last season badly. The one win they've had this term is against the Hargerson side, who are awful as well. It could be a poor year for for Strom's got set at this rate. Yeah, I mean that's an absolute beating. I saw your I saw your tweet about it, and um, you know, concerning times for for, for God's sake. I remember you saying in in pre season that you know you maybe thought they would um, have a slightly better season than you'd predicted the year before. You got them in tenth, but that is an alarming alarming beat. I mean, let's have a bit of positivity for uh, the team that beat them, though. What what are your thoughts on that? I mean, that you know. Fair play to Sanderfield. <sighs> off key with that trick. I, then, I mean, on paper, they're not a good side. They, they should be right down there. Um, I think I've got a feeling there's some very good coaching going on at Sanderfield by this dual management team because last season they definitely punched above their weight. Usually, second season syndrome hit, and it still might do. But I mean, they've had two good away wins. All right, they've only beaten Godset and Hagerson, but still, eight goals in those two games is impressive. They've also uh, faced Buda Glimt at home and only just got beaten. And, uh, you know, against Ham Cam, they lost, but they've created chances. Interesting side. I think um, they're, uh, they're, a lot of people underrate them, including myself, probably. Um, they look a uh, sort of side of, on the day. They, they're really dangerous on the counter attack and can cause problems. So they've, they've definitely been one of the sides that have uh, impressed me more than I expected. And, you know, fair play to all the, all the newly promoted teams as well. I did say I think Alisson are going to be better this time. And, I, you know, Ham Cam, I thought, would start pretty strong. But Yerv have two wins on the board, um, which I didn't expect. And, and then they nearly got a, a result at Volarenga, only just lost 1-0. So there's definitely been a bit of promotion bounce for all three that have come up. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I know you mentioned, you know, you kind of... Um... You did have Jerv to be to be bottom, Sandyfield second bottom. So let, let's see how that goes. Obviously, the early days, only four games played. Uh, before we wrap up, Steve, just give us a few players who've impressed you. Because as I mentioned, they're off here with a hat-trick. Um, we've talked about Trippic a little bit. Is there anyone else who's sort of stood out to you in these early rounds of the season? Yeah, I, I quite liked what I saw from Akor Adams at Lillestrom. Um, he got them, he changed the game against Ham Cam in week one. He bagged a goal against Yerv, and I think he started the other two matches quite well. It's interesting, the guy he replaced in the 11, Fred Johnson, has actually come on and scored the uh, the last two winners for Lillestrom, though. So it's kind of worked out with Akar Adams, who was in signing from Songdal in Ogos, um, uh, and then has then, uh, come into the side, done well, and Fred Johnson comes on as a sub and scores goals, but they're kind of battling for the same position. So I don't know whether they can both uh, transpire in the same 11, as, as one another. I'll be interested to see if we can fit them into the same team. But yeah, I do like what I've seen from uh, Akor Adams. And um, I tell you a player who's, who's starting to catch my eye at Mulder and it was not, this is 
fairly almost expected because he was always uh, earmarked as being a fine player. But uh, Manswerk, the midfielder, I think he's just starting to control matches how we, we, we might have expected you know, of him to develop at Mulder. And he could become a really strong player for them in the middle of the park, I think. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, uh, there's a few others, I'm sure, that I can think about. But uh, just a couple off the top of my, top of my head there who have uh, caught my eye. Yeah, and just to uh, wrap it up, we we will leave it there. But just to give a bit of an insight for anyone maybe who who likes to know about the players and that kind of thing, top of the XG so far is uh, Ebi Moses Ebi. He's got two point five XG. He hasn't no, scored. scored. He hasn't scored, has he? He hasn't scored yet. Two point five seven expected goals though. Uh, Tobias Lauritsen two point two four XG second with two goals. Uh, another player who hasn't scored, uh, John Olav Norheim from Jerv. 2.22 xg no goals what? Uh, and then you got zlatko tripic 2.21 xg three goals and fifth vidar kiartensen at wallerenga 32 years old 2.21 xg two goals so uh, that's your top top uh norheim top. has actually scored an own goal by the way with an own goal <laughs> yeah right scored uh, an own goal what where on earth he must have had a couple of big i can't remember him having chances but that's according to Y Scout, obviously the data. So you know, maybe if it's wrong, then <laughs> take it up with Y Scout. But that's that's them. And just in terms of the expected assists as well, before we wrap up, Zlatko Tripic top of the ex- expected assists as well, two point six three assists, but no assists. So he's obviously creating some chances for this Viking side. Uh, Jonathan Linseth expected assists one point seven nine uh, with three assists for Salzburg. He's racking up a few. Uh, and um, oh, sorry, Osam Sawari. 20 years old at Wallerenga, 1.4 expected assists, no assists to his name registered though. Uh, fourth, Christian Eriksen at Ham Cam, 1.23 XA, two assists. And finally, Veton Barisha at uh, Viking, 1.2 XA, three assists. So uh, there's your chart. The problem with there be at Tromso, I would love to say he's, he's actually going to convert those chances into goals, but I wouldn't trust him. He's like sort of what Doda Bamba was that year. He's like the, the sort of Jordan Ayew of, uh, of 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 the league. You know, he just you just know that he's he's not reliable enough. He'll get the odd goal, but he's just clumsy with his finishing. Mm. Yeah, well that's it for the show. Uh from the show where uh, Paolo De Canio described uh, seven of the Budiglint players as uh, picking still picking fish off harbours. So um, yeah, that controversy rolled on, didn't it? It rumbled on that game. But yeah, well done to Budiglint, by the way, because we didn't actually praise them for that run. Incredible to get to the quarterfinals of the Conference League. I think that's a huge achievement. And obviously rattling a giant club like Roma in the process, as you, as you said, in the whole of Italian football. I mean, pretty disrespectful comments from De Canio there. But yeah, that'll be all. Um, where can we find you, Steve? At Meat Man Soccer on Twitter. And you can find me at JFFootball, J-F-F-U-T-B-O-L, or obviously tweet us at Nordic Football. If you do have a round of questions, we will be doing questions in the next episode. So please uh, send any questions you might have in yourself if you follow us on Twitter and you listen to this. And of course, don't forget, we'll have another weekly uh, bonus episode this week uh, in terms of uh, in the weekend preview show, which has been received quite well by a lot of people. So I hope you're enjoying that. Um, but that'll be all. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode. So thanks so much. Uh, From me, goodbye. Yes, take care, everyone. See you around soon. Goodbye.